Mauricio Dubon did exactly what he set out to do, apparently. He torched the Giants in this game, uh, leading the Astros to a win over San Francisco, and then he used that uh, successful game as a platform to then torch his former team with his words after the game, saying, quote, I was not treated the right way there. And so what did he mean? Was it justified? We'll revisit the whole situation and the trade and all of that next. You are Locked On Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspik, and on the show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday, talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, and I'm a lifelong fan. Thank you for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts, including YouTube. So check us out there if you have not already and hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONMLB for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And coming up on today's show, this was the Mauricio Dubon Dubon game uh, where he came into this game with a clear motivation, apparently, to stick it to his former team, and apparently there's some bad blood. And to his credit, he did it. Like, he single-handedly, several players on the Giants, Kapler, Jock Peterson, and Stripling kind of said, he basically single-handedly beat us, and he did. He had a great game, and then after the game, He spoke to reporters and he just had a lot of negative things to say about the Giants. He said, quote, about his game, uh, quote, it felt really good. Honestly, I was not treated the right way over there. But with Dusty Baker here now, I'm in heaven. And uh, somebody also mentioned that given the injuries to Brandon Crawford and to Mike Yastrzemski and Dubon's versatility to play short and center, and other positions as well, like second base where he's playing right now with the Astros, filling in for the injured Jose Altuve. Uh, Regarding the Giants' possible need for a player like him, he said, quote, thank God they don't. Thank God they don't. I'm good here. I'm good here. uh, It's been a family, and I'm enjoying every moment. And a lot of this is courtesy of Andy Baggerly, some of it like direct quotes from a piece in The Athletic he just wrote about this. And he says, Asked to elaborate on how the Giants mistreated him, Dubon mentioned his frustration with a lack of playing time, and that's when he said, but with Dusty Baker here now, I'm in heaven. And then Baggerly continues to say, as loaded as that compliment might be, Dubon's issues uh, in San Francisco weren't with one manager or coach. They were more systematic than that. It wasn't much of a secret around the team that Dubon didn't agree with the Giants' roster scheme and didn't fit their well-established preference for hitters who control the strike zone, draw walks, and hit home runs, a philosophy that manager Gabe Kapler executes more than orchestrates. I don't totally understand what that means, personally. Um, And then Baggerly goes on to say, then again, the Giants valued Dubon enough to acquire him from Milwaukee uh, at the trade deadline in 2019 and gave him his first significant major league opportunity. Although he provided above average defense at three up the middle positions, he posted an unimpressive 89 OPS plus. That's just like weighted runs created plus, which we talk about all the time, which means about 11% below average offensively over parts of four seasons. And the base running mishaps continued up to the week when the Giants traded him to Houston. And so Later on in the show, I'm going to get into the numbers and the situation that led to the trade of Mauricio Dubon from the Giants to the Houston Astros. But now that we've got kind of baggerly breaking down the situation and providing the quotes from Dubon himself, how about Dwayne Kuyper? Of course, legendary broadcaster needs no introduction. Dwayne Kuyper chiming in on this on KNBR. uh, And this is courtesy of the KNBR staff writing up 
some of the comments that Kuiper made on the radio. Kuiper said, as the Giants, quote, you got to wear it. He got three hits. He can say what he wants. The Giants traded for him and gave him a chance to play in the big leagues. They gave him a chance to play all over, and they gave him a chance to show other organizations that he can play center field, shortstop, he can play second base. So he ought to be thankful that he spent time in the Giants organization because it got him to where he is now. Kuiper goes on to say later, quote, What Dubon forgets is this organization protected him. Each and every guy publicly said, well, we're trying to win the game. We're trying to win and the game doesn't stop if you've got a 10 run lead. While the rest of the league is thinking, what the heck is this guy doing? So he should be or so she he should not forget that they could have easily thrown his tired little butt under the bus but they didn't, end quote. And so, my goodness, they could have easily thrown his tired little butt under the bus, but they didn't. Those are strong words coming from Dwayne Kuyper. He does not normally kind of lash out, but the thing is he's responding to Dubon lashing out. And so I kind of in some ways enjoyed this because it's spicy and my job is to talk about the Giants and this is certainly not a boring topic right now, but Kuiper is absolutely right, and Baggerly mentions it as well, in that the way the, Gi- the Giants gave him a lot of opportunities, and again, we're going to get into the, to the numbers and just kind of what he was doing when he was here in San Francisco, doing and not doing, and the fact that they kind of uh, had him prove that he was a good, like he started out as just like a pure infielder, kind of shortstop second base, uh, but they proved they moved him to the outfield and helped him demonstrate that he was a good defensive center fielder that added to why the Astros were interested in him and so to just completely have nothing positive to say and again like what by the way what Kuiper's referring to is when he bunted early in the season last year when the Giants had a big lead late in the game against the Padres and the Padres looked like they wanted to kill him they were so fuming mad that he bunted for a hit in a game where the Giants had a huge lead and the Giants defended him there was a shot of like Kapler talking to him in the dugout after it and people assumed Kapler was kind of reprimanding Dubon for that move but what Kapler said after the game was that I told him good job I said you know that's what we're that's how we want to play the game we don't want to let up and you know, I could go on and on about that particular story, but they defended him to no end when he could have easily been thrown under the bus. And as Kuiper would say, could have thrown his tired little butt under the bus. And so coming up in just a minute, we're going to transition to the cold hard facts. What did Mauricio Dubon do in San Francisco? Why wasn't it enough to stick on the roster? What is he doing in Houston right now that appears to be different but may not be sustainable? And so all of that is going to be coming up in just a minute. But before we get into it, I want you to know that this episode is brought to you by Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. And for me, it almost always is using non-Game Time services. I'm worried about images of seat views that I frequently am not able to see. And if I'm going to a new venue, that's really important to me. And then for me, As a numbers guy, I always want to feel like I'm getting the lowest price, and to not be guaranteed of that uh, makes me a little bit uncomfortable. But with game time, uh, the game time guarantee with the lowest price means you'll always get the lowest price. Uh, If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. And like I was saying about seat views, you're always going to get images of seat views. Really important if you're going somewhere you haven't been before. Uh, so snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. This episode is also brought to you by So Rare. Our new sponsor, So Rare, is a revolutionary fantasy baseball game 
and Marketplace transforming fans into owners with officially licensed digital cards featuring players from across all 30 MLB teams. Unlike other fantasy baseball platforms, so rare managers truly own their fantasy experience, collecting, buying, selling, and competing with player cards against global opponents to win epic rewards. Win or lose, you still own your cards, and there's no cost to play. Plus, the more you win, the more you advance, collecting increasingly powerful cards and access, accessing next-level competitions and rewards. So Rare recently partnered with MLB All-Stars Juan Soto and Julio Rodriguez to serve as brand ambassadors. Head to SoRare.com slash LockedOn, that's spelled S-O-R-A-R-E dot com, to draft your team of free player cards, set your lineup, and start competing today to win epic rewards. Again, that's SoRare.com slash LockedOn to start playing today. All right, as promised, more about Mauricio Dubon. I mean, it's kind of like... In a way, this story distracts from the fact that the Giants lost yet another baseball game. And so at some point later on in the show today, we will discuss the Giants lost another baseball game and they're 11 and 17 and they've dug themselves a hole. And it's super early in the season still, but these games count all the same and the losses have piled up and they've dug themselves a hole and their playoff odds have taken a hit for it. But it may, they may not have taken as much of a hit as you might think, and just being 11 and 17 doesn't necessarily indicate that they're a bad team, which I think a lot of people would would think. But this many games of a season actually, I mean, it obviously could lead to just a bad season overall, but it doesn't need to. It didn't in 2020. By the way, the Giants play the Houston Astros tonight at 5-10. Uh, Pacific, and they're going to be facing a good young pitcher, Hunter Brown, I believe is his name, good young pitcher, similar mechanics to like Justin Verlander, and you can catch every pitch of the Giants' hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app Search Giants, and the everydayers, by the way, tomorrow will hear us breaking down this game. The Giants need a win, their pitching has been a problem, but like, Finally, they get a good outing out of Ross Stripling yesterday, and the problem was a similar one in that they got a lead. It was a small lead, and the bullpen continued to be a massive problem. Sean Jelly, they like had to use him because the team was beat up from Mexico City, and so they were short on bullpen arms, and so Jelly into a high leverage situation, and Jelly has just not performed and the lead not only evaporated, but became a huge deficit. And once again, throughout the game, the Giants couldn't add on. They got some early runs, but then they just kind of went stagnant. And so it's become an all too familiar pattern, although it does not mean it will continue, but it has certainly cost them early. So, but anyway, I do, I do want to keep on the Mauricio Dubon topic just for a little while longer, just to kind of look at what happened? Why did the Giants trade him? Is anything different here in Houston? Was it a mistake to trade him? And so let's just first discuss his Giants career. Because it wasn't short. I mean, he got a lot of opportunities. He played uh, part of the 2019 season here. And then 2020, 2021. This is the thing. The year that the Giants won 107 games, he was not a big part of that team. He only played... In 74 games, 187 plate appearances. So he was largely platooned when he did play, and he just wasn't here much. And then in 2022, he basically started the season with the Giants, only played in 21 games before being traded to the Astros, where he frankly didn't perform. He was good uh, defensively, but he hit very poorly, which was generally the story of his time with the San Francisco Giants. If I just look at, okay, his career with the San Francisco Giants, what did he do overall offensively? Well, he hit 259, which may have been an above average batting average, but the rest is going to be below average here when we look at a 302 on base and just a 396 slugging. And the overall, you know, similar to OPS plus, weighted runs created plus, a little more advanced, a little more accurate. Uh, 87, 
kind of like Baggerly said, right? What what was the number Baggerly gave? 89. That just goes to show you that th those numbers are going to be similar because they mean similar things. So 89 OPS plus with the Giants, 87 weighted runs created plus. So uh, he just was a below average offensive player across 522 plate appearances. The thing is, if you look at the splits against right-handed pitching, he hit 239 with a 282 on base and a 342 slugging, which is a 68 weighted runs created plus, meaning about 32% below average. Whereas against left-handed pitching in just 173 plate appearances, he hit 300 with a 343 on base and 506 slugging, which is a 126 weighted runs created plus. So he had a skill and it looked like this guy was a platoon player. Now I get it, a young player, perhaps like the point that Dubon's making about playing time, he probably didn't like getting sent to the minors a lot, first of all. He probably didn't like being told to change his approach. I don't know. Without him fully elaborating, it's hard for me to just speculate as to exactly what he meant. But the numbers bear out that we're looking at a guy who should have been platooned. And when he was in the majors, that's what he did. And the issue was, I believe what happened to start the 2022 season is that they got a couple extra roster spots. I keep mixing it up. I may That may have only happened in like 2020 and 2021 or even one of those two years. But in 2022, the Giants were facing a roster crunch where Dubon was out of minor league options and they were going to have to trim their roster. This is why I'm thinking they had, like, I think they started the year... Again, I could be wrong about this. There was, there definitely was a roster crunch. I can't remember why, but it may have been like to start the season, they were allowed to have 28 players, but then they had to come down to 26 after like a month. And so when that month was coming up, then a move had to be made and he couldn't be sent to the minor leagues. And because of this platoon split situation, it basically came down to him or Tyro Estrada. And if we just look at the career numbers of Mauricio Dubon versus Tyro Estrada, I mean, it's just going to be so obvious that the Giants made the right call going with Tyro Estrada. So we'll we'll answer the question, was it actually an either or situation? Could they have could they have held on to both and gotten rid of somebody else? But for now, let's just say it came down to Estrada or Dubon. Well, for Dubon, major league career counting the Astros now, He's been about 20% below average offensively. He's contributed big time with the glove, but negatively with the bat overall. And then the base running, despite him being like fast and athletic, he consistently grades out as a below average base runner, according to these kind of fan graphs metrics that take into account like outs you make on the bases. And he had a problem with that. Giants fans well know Mauricio Dubon was like a reckless base runner who made frequent mistakes on the base paths. And it looks like that's continued with, with the Astros. This year alone, Fangraphs has him at minus 1.3 runs below average on the bases as a base runner. And that would be close to the, the worst full season he had with the Giants when he was at minus 1.5 runs I mean, if you're saying negative, he was negative one point. He cost them a run and a half versus average base running in 2021 in 74 games. Well, this year, he's almost at that same level in 24 games. So I bet you if you ask some Astros people, how's Dubon doing on the bases? They would say, uh, not great. He makes a lot of dumb mistakes out there. So it looks like that's continuing. So you add up the total package of hitting and base running and defense, which is his main strength, contact and defense. Uh, he's put up two Fangraphs wins above replacement in his career, spanning 846 plate appearances. And he's hit 18 home runs and he's stolen 12 bases. Tyro Estrada, so again, two wins above replacement in his career in 850 plate appearances or so. Tyro Estrada already has 1.3 Fangraphs wins above replacement this season in 116 plate appearances. And in his career, he's got 910 plate appearances. 
so just a little more than Dubon. And compared to Dubon's two wins above replacement, Estrada's at 5.2. And so and th- and inc- that includes some time with the Yankees where he was below average. With the Giants, Estrada has 789 plate appearances, so a little less than uh, Mauricio Dubon in his career. And he's put up about that same number, 5.1 fan graphs wins above replacement. He's been a much better bat, like I said, with... Um, Dubon, he's been about 20% below average, whereas Estrada with the Giants has been about 15% above average. Estrada has been a better base runner. So there's just no question that it was the right call. If it was a call between these two, that Estrada, they made the right choice. And what stings about the Dubon trade is that it, you know, as a platoon player, like I said, the numbers against lefties look good and then he was good defensively at second at short in center it felt like there could be a role for that guy and at the very least if you if he just doesn't fit your roster and you have to trade him it would have been nice to get something back of value but they traded for Michael Papirski a catcher who appeared in like five games for the Giants and then they designated him for assignment so ultimately they got nothing for Mauricio Dubon and that's part of what kind of stings about it when he's having some success to start the season with Houston. So coming up in just a minute, we'll wrap up this discussion and turn our attention to a couple of injury updates. And yeah, I mean, Brandon Crawford, Mike Yastrzemski getting MRIs and both going on the injured list. And so we'll get into some of that and just what is Dubon doing in Houston this year? And is he a better player or is he just getting lucky? We'll discuss that definitively in just a minute. But before we do, this episode is brought to you by better help. There are there have been a lot of times in my life where I feel like I could use a little bit of help and for me personally I have a hard time seeking it out and it's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you in life. Sometimes you don't even have time for yourself and get caught up in other things like your job or uh, the giants even and to just, you know, the giant watching the giants for example can be really stressful and if you don't have an outlet for that and coping strategies and just being able to get your mind in the right place it can lead to some problems and i've also been forthcoming about even like having major trauma like something that happens to you that really messes you up psychologically and my intuition was to like not want to deal with it when that happened to me but Working with a therapist is something I I did not want to do at first, but has become invaluable to me. So if you're thinking of starting therapy for whatever reason, whether it's the Giants 11 and 17 start, whether it's a legitimate trauma or just the stresses of everyday life these days, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnMLB today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash LockedOnMLB. All right, here we go. I just want to briefly discuss the numbers for Mauricio Dubon uh, in Houston because it appears on the surface that he's like having a breakout or that he's doing better. And, you know, these comments that he makes after a game, like Kuiper said, he, he kind of has the right to make these comments after the game that he had and the start that he's had to the season. But what Dubon may not realize is that it depends it appears to me that what he's doing is unsustainable. I do not see a lot of difference uh, between, I mean, one thing that's, that does stand out is he doesn't hit the ball in the air as much. And that could be part of what he's talking about is they wanted him to be more of a guy who hit for power. And maybe that just wasn't his, his game and he didn't feel comfortable with that. But in terms of chasing out of the zone, he continues to chase out of the zone more than the average hitter. He still makes a lot of contact. The strikeout rate, which I think when the Giants were asking him to try to hit for more power, strikeout rate was closer to 20%. And last couple of years, it's fallen down closer to 10%. And so I think maybe he just feels more comfortable with that kind of game. But what I overall see is a guy who has a track record of a batting average on balls in play 
a key luck slash sustainability indicator. I do not like to call it all luck. If you're just dialed in as a hitter and just getting hits left and right, doesn't mean you're just getting lucky. You could just be dialed in. But what it can, what it does often mean is that you just don't keep that up, especially if you have a track record of a certain level of performance in this number. Uh, and then over a small sample, like we are in now, 24 games here, you suddenly are outperforming. Let, let me just be clear. He's got a career 283 batting average on balls in play. And this season... That number is 348. So what are we talking about? 70 points nearly or more. Uh, about 70 points of batting average on balls in play higher than his career norm. And so if you regress that number and if you look at all the projections, some of them, I mean, believe that he's improved a little bit in this area to the point where he could be closer to a 300 batting average on balls in play versus his career 283 mark. But nobody believes, and myself included, that he's going to last a season hitting 348 on balls in play. And so when that comes down like minimum 50 points, you look at his 317 average, subtract 50 plus points. You look at his 340 on base, subtract 50 points. And so when you do that, he ends up around his career numbers. Like right now, he's got a 340 on base. Subtract 50 points. What are you at? 290. What is his career on base percentage? 294, which is bad. And again, all in all, and the power, the isolated power last year was 099. Uh, this year, it's 089. So it's even worse. So he's. it just doesn't look sustainable to me. I want to say I wish him the best, but after some of the comments he made as a competitor and as a Giants fan, uh, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way to hear some of those comments. At the same time, I want to be clear that if he really was mistreated in any way, then that's a like the Giants need to look internally and figure out if they're doing something wrong here. And this could be a whole other conversation we could have about just huge general philosophies with, with the Giants and the platoons and you know, not being attuned to the human element enough. Those are fair arguments to make, but also simultaneously, you have a lot of guys in the Giants clubhouse. 2021, many players said it was like the best clubhouse chemistry they've ever been around. And again, bear in mind, Dubon was not a big part of that 2021 team. He spent a large portion of that year in the minors. And so he could just be kind of griping about that as opposed to like, he was on the team and he still didn't like it here. It could just be they didn't he didn't feel like he was getting enough opportunity opportunities and that they were trying to change him and he didn't like that. So it's not entirely clear what exactly he meant. And um Baggerly, Andrew Baggerly, even expresses it wasn't about the manager or a particular coach. It was more about like the general scheme that he didn't really fit into like a platoon and trying to change his approach and all that. But anyway, I see a guy who's due for some heavy regression and a guy who kind of at best is a league average hitter, probably someone who continues to have trouble on the bases. He has consistently been a below average base runner despite being a, an above average runner. And so that just says to me bad instincts on the bases, which we saw over and over. I love the glove. I think he can play center, short, second. He looked really smooth at second base yesterday. So in a lot of ways, I like the guy. But, you know, what stinks is that they got basically nothing in return for a guy who has some upside. And it's it's actually quite limited upside because of what I'm saying. He doesn't have power and he chases a lot and he's not a great base runner. And so overall, like a career putting up two wins above replacement in almost you know, a thousand plate appearances. It's just not that impressive, but he is still just 20. He's going to be 29 in July. So look, I wish him the best, but certainly the comments were interesting. And so I guess lastly, I just want to say, I think he's due for regression at the end of the year. He's not going to have the kind of numbers he has now. I can say that pretty confidently. We can follow up on that. If you disagree with me, let me know. And Let's check in at the end of the year, assuming he stays healthy and continues to play. Because if he just 
gets hurt and stops playing, of course, the numbers will stay where they are. But if he keeps playing, I think that average on balls in play is going to fall at least 50 points. That's my prediction. So lastly, Brandon Crawford goes on the IL with a mild calf strain. They call it a grade one plus, which means grade one and then a little bit more, but not grade two. Mike Yastrzemski, did I dream about this? They said it was, I believe there was an MRI and it was a grade one hamstring strain, which is great news that's the least severe, and it looked like it may have been quite severe. And so they thought he would miss a month plus, and now they're thinking he might not even miss a month. And so that's great news. But I feel like I I either read this or I dreamed this, that it was actually they said it was a grade two hamstring strain. And so I, I honestly think that I dreamed that last night. If you're wondering if I'm locked on Giants, yes, indeed I am. So anyway, the Giants play the Astros tonight again at 510 Pacific. Catch every pitch of the Giants' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app Search Giants. The Giants badly need a win here. This is one of those situations where things are going bad, but like you could still win this series. Just toughen up, show up to the park, win a game, please. Uh, it's going to be tough against Hunter Brown. Anthony DiScofani, though, he's been like the stopper for the Giants. So they need a good outing. They needed a good outing from Stripling yesterday, and they got it, but it still wasn't enough. As the bullpen having to rely on Sean Jelly, they may need to make some moves in that pen because there's some guys who are just not getting it done, including Jelly. So it'll be tough, but toughen up. This is the big leagues and win some games, please. There was more I wanted to say about the Giants record now and 2020, but we'll save that for tomorrow. Hopefully a win and, and it'll be a more optimistic look because if they fall to 11 and 18, it's just they're, they'll just have t- continued to dig this hole. So anyway, once again, my name is, name is Ben Kaspik. Check me out on Twitter at Ben Kaspik, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. Every day or tomorrow on the show, we'll be breaking down uh, the Giants playing the Astros at 510 Pacific again, and you can catch every pitch of the Giants hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Search Giants. Once again, I'm Ben Kaspik. Check me out on Twitter at Ben Kaspik, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review. It helps me out a lot. So thank you in advance and thanks to everyone who's done so already. Can't wait to be with you again tomorrow. Hopefully, please, please, talking about a victory. So thanks again for listening. You are now Locked on Giants.